We are back. It's Tuesday evening, and it's weather for Weather Geeks time. Hope you had a good weekend, everyone. I had uh, yesterday off, so no Weather Geeks on Monday, but we'll be with you through the rest of the uh, week. And, you know, we're now into mid-July. We're halfway through meteorological summer, the months of June, July, and August. And I looked back at uh, some of the weather stats and found this, uh, you know, rather notable nugget uh, through... Halfway, the halfway point of summer, uh, the third driest first half of summer on record officially at the airport. Now we average at the airport from J June 1st through July 15th, 5.74 inches of rain. But this year we've only had 2.57. Number one on this list, of course, no surprise, that very hot and dry stretch back in the summer of 1988. Now those are the numbers at the airport. Of course, we have local rain gauges that are unofficial. And uh, thanks to all of our weather geeks and uh, Kokoraz, uh, volunteers out there. If you got a rain gauge that you uh, then report your data to uh, to the website and so it can be accessed by the public, including all of us here in the Weather Enterprise, whether broadcast meteorologists or the National Weather Service. Thanks to everyone who volunteers and does that. And here's just a sampling of those uh, Kokoraz uh, observations through the first half of summer. Now Canfield, five inches, but uh, Hermitage at 5.23 is one of the better totals in our area. There are some totals that are closer to three, three and a half inches are particularly dry in southeastern Columbia County, over into Beaver County, Lawrence County. Amounts are a little bit better kind of in the middle and northern parts of our viewing area. Um, but, you know, these numbers do vary. That's something we see all the time, of course, in the uh, summer season with thunderstorms bringing differing amounts of rainfall. So, you know, we do a uh, uh, seasonal forecast for most of our seasons, including summer. And this was the uh, forecast we put out in late May for the summer season with the strongest odds temperature-wise being warmer than the average. In fact, it was very good odds of a warmer than average summer, and so far that's come to fruition. Now, the actual departure from average at the airport is the the number's not quite as impressive as the precipitation total, which has been more noteworthy, but of course it has been a hotter than average summer so far, and we did suspect that there were pretty good odds that it would be at least an average summer, if not a drier than average summer. And that, of course, has come to fruition so far. We only gave it about a 20% chance of a wetter than average summer uh, this time around. Now, we've got half of summer left, and I kind of suspect the back half of summer will bring more chances of precipitation than the uh, first half, even though climatologically speaking, August tends to be drier than June and July. But this year, maybe kind of reversed. I think we'll start to see the numbers uh, shift a little bit during the second half of the uh, summer season. In the meantime, last evening, did you get a, a look at the derecho that moved through uh, the Chicago area and a lot of other places around parts of the lower Great Lakes? Um, this was a legit derecho and produced many spin-up tornadoes. Um, at one point, there was tornado warnings all up and down this line because embedded in that squall line, there were little circulations, QLCS um, type tornadoes, um, or circulations at least, and uh, some winds of 100 miles per hour observed in some places. There was even a uh, an observed tornado in downtown Chicago as this rolled through last evening. And the wind damage extended from eastern Iowa and southern Wisconsin down through a lot of the northern half of Illinois, the northern half of Indiana. Then this thing really ran out of steam, as expected, once it moved into Ohio and southern parts of Indiana. Now, what happened to that system? Uh, it kind of split in two almost. The uh, original derecho kind of dissipated, but the kind of the... Uh, the weather disturbance responsible for kicking up that derecho then pivoted into New England today. Another little piece of energy went to our south, and we were kind of, you know, just in a squeeze play here in between. So it was a pretty uneventful day today. The uh, modeling started picking up on this over the last 24 hours that our thunderstorm chances would be, in fact, pretty low today, even though a handful of days ago, it looked like today might be an active day. But the, the formation of that derecho just sort of threw everything off balance, uh, at least in at least compared to our original expectations for today. And as of this recording at 7:21, not much going on. A couple of showers trying to get up on their feet out in central Ohio. Limited or no thunder and lightning with this uh, as of uh, right now. But I can't rule out a passing shower and maybe a thunderstorm as we go through the overnight. Now I do think rain chances will be higher for a time on Wednesday. We need some rain. And some of us are going to get some Wednesday. Some of us probably little, if any. But we do have that chance in the morning of, of some passing showers and storms. And our cold frontal passage will be early to mid-afternoon on Wednesday. And until that front clears the area, we're going to allow for the chance of a shower 
or a thunderstorm. The drier air will start start to filtering in then late in the day, especially into our Wednesday night, a more comfortable night. Wednesday night, mixed with sun and clouds for Thursday, and then wall-to-wall sunshine Friday. Just a perfect summer day coming our way Friday with low humidity and comfortable temperatures and hardly a cloud in the sky. Now, the dew points are going to be a real treat at the end of this week. One more day of elevated dew points tomorrow, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, dew points mostly in the 50s. We consider that to be, of course, very comfortable in the summer season. It'll take until early next week before the dew points start coming up again, and that will begin, I think, kind of an unsettled period for next week. I think starting about a week from today, next Tuesday, in other words, uh, the pattern will start to turn a little more unsettled, but not a drop of rain to be found from Wednesday night through at least Monday during the daylight hours. Monday night into Tuesday, rain chances increase as those dew points come up, and there may be a front that stalls around the area for a handful of days next week, bringing us increased chances of precipitation, which as long as it doesn't come with too much rain at one time or severe weather or anything like that, we will welcome with open arms. I suspect when the drought monitor uh, comes out this week and then into next week, we're going to see more areas covered by moderate drought conditions officially in Ohio and western Pennsylvania. Uh, that will come out Thursday, but the data is valid as of Monday. So Thursday's drought monitor will reflect the conditions yesterday on Monday. Same thing next week. Um, the Thursday drought monitor next week will not factor in any rains that will occur after Monday night. So again, I'm expecting the, the drought uh, designation to expand quite a bit over the next 10 days across our part of the country. We'll have more updates, of course, on future rainy situations and much, much more on Weather for Weather Geeks. Thanks for watching on this Tuesday evening. Let's meet right back here on Wednesday.